I'm Charles. Today I'm going to be walking through some sample church CRM development workflows using NetBeans. I'm going to make a few assumptions here. The first is that you're watching this video because you want to learn how to contribute to the development effort. Two is that you're using the existing Vagrant development environment, currently version 1.3. That you already have NetBeans installed and that you have Git installed. So let's get started. The first workflow I want to talk about is actually creating a bug fix. So the very first thing you'll want to do is head on over to our GitHub page, uh, specifically the issues section. Um, and you can see this is our current backlog. Everything we know of that we want to get done is represented here in the issues section. So always start at the issues and, and use that to begin your work. I'm going to start with this one, the 3707 maps API key. It looks like this was a web report, and the issue here is that the banner telling users that they need to enter an API key should provide a hyperlink to the system settings page where the key should be entered. There's a bunch of uh, text generated by that web report functionality. So let's get started. First thing we want to take a look at is that this was reported from the map using google.php page. So I'm going to file that screen off to the side. And this is my NetBeans IDE. First thing I want to draw your attention to is this pane on the left. Inside of here we have projects, navigator, and services. We're going to start with projects and go to that map using google.php file. So that's inside of our source directory. And let's open up that file. So it looks like the bug report was that the Google Map API key is not set. That banner message should actually give a link to um, the system settings page. So let's go ahead and create that. Before I begin any work, the very first thing I want to do is create a new branch that corresponds with the changes I am about to make. So there's two ways you can do this. Um, one is directly through the user interface here in NetBeans, and you can do checkout, checkout revision. The other option is to create your branch through the Git CLI, but I'm not going to cover that right now. You always want to create a branch off of master. This ensures that the changes you're about to make are made from the latest set of code in that master branch. We want to check out as a new branch. And here's where uh, you have some freedom in how you're going to name your branch, but it helps if you follow a convention. Um, and the convention that uh, we're kind of using is that you preface your branch name with bug fix, forward slash, and then the actual uh, GitHub issue number uh, that you're attempting to solve. So this is 3707 followed by a dash, and then a quick description of the issue that you want to solve. So this will be maps API key shortcut link. So we're almost ready to actually create this branch. Uh, if you notice, uh, before we go ahead and click checkout, we can see that the commit ID of master is here. The previous author or previous person to commit to that branch is listed, the date, as well as their message for that commit. So we can click checkout, we'll get a brand new branch, um, and we'll actually see that our current branch here changes, and that indicates our current working branch or our index. And then we can go ahead and make our change. So I'm gonna add some HTML here that will give us that hyperlink. So we've got our HTML link added that goes to our root path, forward slash system settings.php. If I come down here, I right click on my current Git repository, I can click show changes. This gives me a kind of uh, diff at a glance of all of the files that have changed uh, in my workspace uh, compared to the index. So if I double click on that, I should see a single line uh, with a visual diff representing the changes. Uh, the next thing I want to do is test those changes uh, by going to the IP address, uh, my uh, virtual development environment. So I'm on the Main Street Cathedral's page. I can go to groups. I'm sorry, people, dashboard, and inside of there was the family map. So we can see that this is now a hyperlink. I can click on that. See, it takes me to system settings.php. So for now, we'll consider for the purpose of this video that this issue is solved. And now that the issue is solved, we want to actually commit our changes. So in NetBeans, you can do that by just clicking on the commit button. This will give you a pop-up window uh, with a area for you to enter your commit message, as well as giving you a description of the files you're about to commit. 
Additionally, if you haven't yet pushed this branch to the remote, you can choose to amend the previous commit. I'm not going to do that here though. So we're going to say add hyperlink to the map using Google page commit. So those changes have now been uh, taken from our workspace, uh, staged to our index, and then committed uh, to our workspace. Uh, and now we just have to push those up to GitHub. To push those changes, we can right click on our repository here, go to the remote option, and choose push to upstream. This will ask us, are we sure we want to continue and create the branch? We can choose yes. NetBeans will then communicate with our GitHub environment and we can set it up to track remotely. And we should see that there is now a new branch on GitHub and that is the case. So we can compare and create a pull request. Always make sure that you target the church CRM project, not church info. And you would want to fill out um, this template as much as possible. And there you go. That is your first pull request. Now I want to go back and uh, just kind of demonstrate some of the functionalities that NetBeans give you, gives you as opposed to uh, just a standard plain text editor. So if you see in this change that I made, system URLs is a uh, static class that has methods and we can access those using the double colon operator. Um, NetBeans actually gives us some nice autocomplete functionality here. It'll give us uh, visibility into all of the methods uh, contained within that system URLs class. So I can see, you know, here I wanted to use root path, but I could see some of these other methods. If we have PHP docs defined, it'll give us kind of a snippet of what that method's supposed to do. If I'm really not sure which method I want to use uh, when I'm looking at that autocomplete dialog, I can actually right click on this method, choose navigate and go to declaration. And I can actually see the code behind that method. Um, so I can decide if that's the right method or not to use. Um, additionally, uh, if we go down and just make a few kind of changes to uh, some of this ORM code, um, we could see that it's going to give us visibility into this person query class as well, um, just by kind of auto-completing with this arrow. And we can see all the methods available to us, courtesy of the Propel ORM. So we can see if we wanted to combine or join or filter um, by any of those database tables. Next, I want to demo uh, some of the SQL services that are built into NetBeans. Um, we started off by looking at this Projects tab, but we're going to go over to the Services tab. And if you follow the instructions on the NetBeans IDE section of our wiki, you can see that there's actually a configuration option for accessing the SQL Server inside of Vagrant. And you can use this to execute queries directly in your development environment from the IDE. So I'm just going to do a simple query here and show you uh, the contents of my config table. Right click on it, view data, it will automatically populate a select star limiting 200 rows and you can peruse the data right here. You can also make changes. This will obviously break something and you can commit those changes right within the UI. Super useful tool. Next I want to show off some of the Git integrations and tools that you can use here within NetBeans. So let's take a look at one of the most interesting tools, which is known as Git Blame, or as NetBeans calls it, annotations. So in order to access this, you can click on the team uh, menu option and then choose show annotations. This will add a left column to your code view and it will actually show the last person to change a particular line of code, as well as the commit ID uh, in which that was that line of code was changed. So we can see George changed this line in commit F3065E on June 13th, 2017. If I click on that, I can actually view all of the changes. Uh, that's kind of a boring commit. Let's look at a different one. Uh, let's look at this one. So we can actually look at all of the changes that occurred as part of that commit. And if you wanted to dig in, you could even do a diff to previous and see every single line of code that changed therein. Which leads me to kind of my next point is that NetBeans has a built-in visual diff. So any branch that you have checked out in NetBeans, you can get a visual diff of that branch to any other branch uh, fairly easily. So I want to check out uh, one of my current active branches, which is uh, has to do with the cart functions. So I will choose checkout, checkout revision, 
I can just paste in the name of my branch there and it will automatically search through the entire Git uh, repository and I can check that out. I'm going to revert any working changes that I have since I don't want to keep them. And then I can choose diff. Uh, here we're actually going to do diff2 and this allows us to enter the name of any other branch and get a diff of that change or the changes on that branch to our selected branch. And I don't want to see the changes that are in my workspace. I just want to see the changes that are on the head of that branch. So I can choose head. These are all the files that have changed and I can use this up and down arrow to quickly jump through. Notice it's skipping through different files and showing me a visual diff of each of those files and their changes. It's a great tool for uh, reviewing uh, pull requests and other types of changes even before you submit your own. And another great tool is the show history tool. So if you right click on your Git repository down here, you can choose show history and just click on search. There are some criteria that you can fill out. I'm just going to accept the default for the demonstrations purpose. But you can see all of the commits that were made on this branch, uh, including any of its parent branches if it's been uh, branched recently. So you can see this was a commit message. If you click the plus icon, you can see the files that were changed within that commit so that you can really get an idea of the history of that file and the changes that have been made. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful and you can always join our developer chat room uh, by going to our webpage and clicking open chat and someone should be around to help you out. Thanks. Bye.